Hey guys, so we've had some pretty big news today and it comes from the world of inflation. Yay! Inflation, everyone's favourite word. I wanted to jump on this quick to give you my reactions because I think it's pretty big and I don't think it's as clear a picture as what they're making out. So the headlines today, inflation tumbles to a two-year low to 4.6% as energy costs ease. And the FTSE has had a positive reaction, and it's up 1.35% as of today. And remember, that's a 101st company to the 350th company, the next 250 companies after the FTSE 100. The reason we look at that is the FTSE 100 tends to be more affected by outside factors, whereas the FTSE 250 is a more accurate representation of the UK market. So any news that affects the UK is going to have a bigger impact on the FTSE 250. And of course, this is being boasted as a boost for Rishi, as he's managed to half inflation. But the question is has he really managed to half inflation this comment on twitter really made me laugh which said when you announced your policy in january every commentator stated that this would always happen anyway and it has absolutely nothing to do with you and when we look at the chart we can pretty much see why this is the case so as of today, we can see the inflation rate that's come out is 4.6% in October 2023. But if we go up to October 2022, it was 11.1%. But if you remember, this time in October last year was almost the peak of the war in Ukraine with all of this crazy energy crisis going on. So once that came back under control, then of course this was pretty much going to happen. It's not really a direct response of anything the government has particularly done, although they want to claim it to be that way. This chart is particularly interesting to look at, although the data, unfortunately, from the Parliament website is only up to 2023. It does show you how big the impact of energy was on inflation and how that is now coming back down under control. So, of course, as that has eased, so has inflation. But unfortunately, that doesn't mean that everything has eased as well. What I find really interesting is when you look at the Office for National Statistics, if you go on their website and look at their chart, there seems to be this other magical line that doesn't really appear on any of the news. I mean, where's that? Now, this line actually represents the costs represented with owning a house, which, as you can see, haven't particularly gone down at all. Why haven't they fallen just like anything else? And this is because the cost of everything to do with the house is so damn expensive. One benefit is that wage growth has outstripped inflation in recent months. As you can see, in wage growth has been going up, so people's pay has been going up while inflation has been going down. I don't think everybody will feel that, but it's still partially some kind of good news. What's interesting, though, is when we look at the costs of our everyday items, now here is just five selected at random. We've got olive oil, hard cheese, cucumber, mayonnaise, and granulated white sugar. So we can see the price from October to now, olive oil, four pounds to seven pounds, cucumbers, 72 to 83, which seems like nothing. But then when you look at the overall cost, the price has actually gone up 25.8%. And that's not even the worst examples. If we pick some more of the extreme examples, like you bake beans, you've got fiberboard, MDF involved in, you know, doing up a house. We've got kerosene, dog food, and car hire. Then the costs would have gone up 120%. And what always makes me laugh is remember that saying when people used to say, oh, you'd be living on beans for a week. Well, now when beans are five pound for a pack of four, you definitely will not be living on beans. You might be able to live on Aldi beans, but you definitely will not be living on Heinz beans, that's for sure. This is apparently down to the rising cost in energy, so we'll see whether the price of beans comes back down, but I feel like a lot of the brands at the moment have just used this as an excuse to up their prices to where they want them to be, and reel in the profits. But what's actually really interesting that has come from this though, and is kind of unprecedented, is for the first time in a really long time, savers will actually be able to beat inflation with a savings account, which is pretty crazy. Now in terms of actually cutting the rate, I don't think we're going to see it anytime soon, unfortunately. Economists are predicting that it's going to be about May time next year, and I think it will be about the same. The Bank of England aren't known for making any kind of brash decisions. What they will probably do is wait and see what happens over the next coming months, and then decide if they're going to lower that rate. The current rate of inflation is 4.6%, and the target is 2%, so we'll have to see what happens with that. My general feeling is I want it to seem much more secure before they make any rash decisions. The key thing to remember with this whole inflation dilemma is, on the surface of it, it sounds fantastic. It seems like everything has been cut in half but it hasn't been cut in half. It just means that everything is 4.6% more expensive than it was a year ago, when everything was already very expensive. So it's not particularly good news, but at least it's a step in the right direction. The question is, when the Bank of England does update this rate, what it will mean for mortgages and for savers. It's likely going to mean you're going to be saving a bit less if you've got cash, but it will be good news for homeowners because their rates will come down. It's not going to be such good news for people who have locked recently at these really high rates, but... 
Hey ho. I did make a post on TikTok recently where I said, try not to lock in for these five year rates because the banks know that that rate is going to come back down. We'll have to see what happens and no one can predict the future. What's unfortunate though, in my case, because I want to buy a house, I do think this isn't going to be great for house prices. Well, it's going to be good if you own a house, but not if you're looking to buy one. Because what this will mean is when the rates come back down, people will be able to borrow much more money. Now, the only positive I will say is I think this has been quite a stark reminder. When the rates were really low, people thought they could borrow this in finite pool of money that they would never have to pay any more interest on. This period we've had down here from 2009 right up to 2021 is kind of unheard of. Rates have been so much higher in the past. So unfortunately, I think a lot of people are still going to be in a lot of trouble with these high rates, but it may hold people back and they might think twice about borrowing a lot of money because it could shoot up and then they will be in real trouble. I would like to think this would help bring house prices back down a little bit, but I really don't think it will. But I don't think we're going to see any major changes till May next year. What this may do though is stop the Conservatives now doing the kind of tax cuts that they were planning on doing because they'll probably save them till right before the election so they can look good again. I think it's all about public perception and how good people can look. Apologies this video isn't as polished as my normal ones, I just had to get my thoughts out ASAP. Let me know what you think about this whole dilemma and see what's going to happen over the next six months. I think it's going to be really interesting and hopefully, let's just hope this is a step in the right direction. At least the good news we can take away from this is that energy costs are hopefully coming back down under control and we're not all going to get absolutely rinsed this winter. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.